start again. Call for the April 14th, 2021 meeting of the licensed commissioners at 5.30 on Zoom. Um, Commissioner Espinosa is absent, but Commissioner Cade, uh, Cecilia, and signature to our presence so we can continue. This approval of the minutes of the hearing of March 24th. And uh, some an update has been sent. It wasn't really indicated what the update was, but I have uh, two corrections. On the third order of business, uh, the petition for alteration of the ale house, that was a continued petition. So um, we're done with them. And the fourth order of business for a motor restaurant, that also was a continued petition, and we're done with that. So the minutes should indicate both of those were continued petitions. Does anybody else have a change? No. Okay. With those two corrections, then I make a motion to accept the approval of the minutes of the hearing of March 24th. Do I hear a second? Second. Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Signature, yes. Um, first order of business then is a continued petition for a transfer of license and pledge of all alcohol package store license for Cottage Street Liquors 270. Cottage Street to Parkside Discount Liquors Incorporated DBA Prime Liquors located at 1334 Liberty Street. Kushal Gogri is the manager of record. This is a uh, continued petition, second meeting. Uh, so I asked Namako, do we have any uh, input on this transfer from the public since the last meeting? No, Mr. Chairman. No, okay. Does anybody else have anything to add? Oh, okay. So I then make a motion uh, that we go into discussion and vote. Do I hear mm -hmm. second? <clears throat> Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Signature, yes. Okay. So we have heard the first half of this meeting and the proposal to move to Liberty Street, and we have no additional input from the public. So I would uh, suggest we approve this transfer. Does anybody have a different opinion? <coughs> no. So I make a motion that we approve a petition for transfer of license and pledge of license from Cottage Street Liquors to Parkside Discount Liquors Incorporated, DBA Prime Liquors, located at 1334 Liberty Kushmal Gobri, the manager of record with a pledge to Bay State Savings Bank. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. The signature, yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner. Have a good night, evening. All right. Okay. Second order of business is a petition for change of officers at direct. Uh, of the L or LLC manager of Texas Roadhouse Holding, 12 Wall Street. This is uh, a change of officers that's already been approved by the ABCC and just needs to be ratified by the local boards. Uh, Jason Bain is the manager of record, and I do not see him because he does not need to attend. Commissioners have any questions? No. Uh, make a motion. We go into discussion and vote. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Mr. Siciliano. Yes. Mr. Dan. Somebody have something to say? Dan, Dan. Dan, no, this is not Who's talking, please? Nobody. Okay. Uh, so, as I said, this is a uh, already been approved by the ABCC, and it's just a a, a change of some officer at the corporate level. So I see no reason we, why we shouldn't approve this. So uh, I would make a motion to approve the petition for change of officers, directors, or LLC manager for Texas Roadhouse Holding LLC, Springfield location, 12 Mall Street. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? 
Yes. Is your signature? Yes. Thank you. Next item is the petition for change of manager for Tree Hall and Ashi LLC, DBA Freefield Mobile, located at 1820 Boston Road. Lena Takar is a proposed manager of record. We have Lena with us. And Lena, you, uh, Sanjay, I believe, was the manager there at this location? Correct. And, and he is now the manager down down on, on the other store. Yeah, down the road, yeah, at Spark Keys. Commissioners, if you recall, uh, Sanjay made a, a promise to change the manager of record on this Springfield Mobile gas station, which is located way up on Boston Road, almost on the Wolverham line. And here we have Lena Takar, who is our proposed manager of record. Lena, could you tell us about your experience a bit? Yes, um, so um, I have been with the mobile since 2011, uh, since we opened. Um, my husband and Sanjay are partners in this business and I go uh, Monday through Friday. I'm there um, every day and I live in Wilmerham, so I'm only, you know, 10 minutes away. So I'm also go as needed, you know, anything they call me and I and I go there. So I know both parts of the stores, the, the convenience side and the, the package side. Okay. Um, how many hours a week will you be working there as the manager of record? Um, at least 40. Okay. And how many employees do you have that are selling alcohol? Um, we have two. Two? Uh, are those employees TIP certified? Um, I am TIP certified. I just became TIP certified. And so... Um, I've been training them um, on how to, you know, detect the the IDs and that sort of thing. But uh, uh, but they are not currently tip certified. Okay, that's not good. We uh, require all of our servers and sellers of alcohol to be tip certified. So you need to get them enrolled in that course ASAP. Okay, I can do that. All right, get their certificates. Okay. We, we have very clever college students in Springfield. I just saw, I actually just saw a fake ID last night from one of our uh, bars. And um, it looked, it was very, very, a very, very good copy. So uh, you need to know, they need to know how to identify uh, a false ID and okay. when it is appropriate to say, go somewhere else, I'm not going to serve you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely make sure that happens. And, uh, you know, we haven't had an issue. So up till now, so, which is a good sign. So, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so you want their, you want everybody's tip certifications and you want to keep them current and you want them on file because okay. if, there, if there is a selling to minors, uh, incident, then we are going to ask you to produce that certificate and, okay. uh, you don't want to produce an expired certificate or say we don't have a certificate for that person. That will not go well, okay? Uh, um, and you live in Wilbraham, so you are close, okay? Now, as the manager of record, you are personally answerable to this commission for all of uh, Mass General Law, ABCC uh, rules and regulations. Do you, okay. this is a huge responsibility. Do you understand and accept that responsibility? I do. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Nope. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Oh. Uh, we're going to make a, uh, make a motion then uh, that, I don't know if this was explained to you, Lena, that this is a bifurcated meeting on Zoom. So uh, we have a, 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 the first meeting like you just heard me tell the other licensees, you know, that they were done and ready to go because they already had their first meeting. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to close the meeting here for you and then continue it for two weeks and then uh, for public input. Uh, the public has the uh, right to uh, say, uh, we don't like Lena and this is why. And it doesn't happen very often, but you never know. So that's the law and uh, we're going to abide by that. And uh, so I would make a motion, uh, commissioners, that we continue this uh, hearing on the transfer uh, of manager 
to for two weeks. Do I hear a second? Second, second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signatory? Yes. Okay, we will see you in two weeks, Lena. Okay, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a pre-hearing conference for Gundolfia Associates LLC, DBA Saga, located at 8494 Worthington Street. Pedro Cruzado is the manager of record. A violation of January 21st, failure to call police to report a disturbance and violation of the security plan for failure to provide video footage. So, Attorney Days, are you are you presenting this to the commission? I'm sorry, did you ask me that, Peter? Yeah, are you are are you handling this for the the commission tonight? No, Namako is. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, we Dan, are you representing Saga? Yes, I'm here on behalf of Saga. Mr. Ramesh, the owner, is also on here. Well. We were going to propose a uh, resolution, but we'll defer to you guys and when that's when you're ready to hear from us. All right, Namako, do you want to read the, the facts of the violation? Okay, so on January uh, 21st, 2021, around 9.40 p.m., officers were dispatched to the area of 80 Worthington Street. Uh, upon arrival, well, they, were, they arrived there, there was a, sh a short spotter activation indicating that eight rounds of ammunition had been fired. When they arrived, they found three shell casings in the street. Um, a video footage across um, Saga, which is at 1550 Main Street was assessed. And the footage showed that there was a gentleman which came, who came out of Saga and then fired uh, shots at, at the car that was traveling on, uh, what do you call it? On Weddington Street. Um, officers attempted to, you know, obtain a video footage of the in, uh, premises of Saga, but there was no video footage. So we are charging them with failure to call the police and also um, inadequate se security plan, which is uh, not being able to provide interior footage of the premises of which their own um, security plan states that they would have an interior footage and, and they will retain it for a period of 30 days. So we have a, a Saga patron emerging from the bar and shooting at a car? Yes. And uh, Saga security plan says they will have video footage and they f provided nothing to the police? Yes. Okay, Attorney Kelly. I think they provided some, they just didn't provide one particular angle inside. Um, just, but yeah, they're right. They have, they did not provide, they're in violation of the security plan. Whether you provide some of it, half of it, or 99% of it, you're not in compliance. So we, I just don't want you to leave the impression that we just didn't provide any of it. They had some cameras that weren't working, but they're in violation of their security plan. There's no doubt about that. Um, according to Mr. Del Mar's reports, I just want to expand it a little bit. I, you know, when you hear like someone walked out of the bar shooting, you think of just someone opens the door and comes out, you know, like the wild, wild west. Um, that's not, uh, according to Mr. Delmar's reports, it's not exactly what happened. This happened around 9.40 p.m., which at the time was almost closing time because this is during the 10 p.m. curfew. Um, relatively small crowd, as the report talks about. Um, according to Mr. Delmar's reports, and he, I see him on, so he can correct me if I'm wrong, the, uh, the bar... He's outside speaking with a bunch of other people. They're kind of like going to the cars. They're kind of outside. Um, at that point, another vehicle comes down the street. There's kind of some words exchanged between this other vehicle that had just kind of appeared on the scene and an individual that was inside, inside Saga. According to Mr. Uh, Delmar's reports, you know, it couldn't be determined whether um, the male suspect was in possession of the firearm as he exited, as he exited Saga, excuse me, or if it was handed to him outside by someone else in the group that um, was there. So I don't want you to leave the impression that, you know, he's walking out of the bar with the gun. Um, but having said that, um, Mr. Ramesh admits he's in violation of his security plan in that he did not provide the security tape. Um, the, with respect to the other one, uh, we're, we're going to recommend overall a 
two day suspension to be suspended for a period of one year, one year or two days to be held in abeyance for a period of one year. Um, we feel it's appropriate given the circumstances of where we are with COVID um, and the, the relative violation here. Uh, I will say this on the other charge of failure to call, you know, um, the, your own, I looked up your own regs just for reference. Uh, page 18, section 2.16 G is the appropriate, um, you know, section that talks about fear to call. Really, it's only fear to call for things that happen by your own definition on the licensed premises. So I looked up licensed premises by your own definition. That's on page five. Um, it's only what's actually on the license it's by all accounts by the, the report happened in the middle of the street. So I don't want to leave with the impression that something happened inside the, um, you know, the inside the premises that happened on the street. Um, when Mr. Mish tells me that when the people went outside, you know, everyone was kind of scattering gone. There's just, they didn't know what was going on. I mean, I'm right now in my office in Mulberry street. I hear, I hear shots on, unfortunately on a regular basis. So that, you know, it's, it's undifficult that you could just say like it happened here. I mean, it can happen on the riverfront. It can happen on main street. There's really no determination where that is. So I'm not sure what he would have said if he hadn't called. So, um, and there was no disturbance on the licensed premises. I understand what you're, the car could be well, was just in front. I get that, but you know, the plain wording is on the premises. And if, if, you know, licensees can't defer to the plain wording, I mean, you know, what can they do? So for that reason, and I think it's a distinction of the difference in the sense that he's already admitting to it and asking for a two day suspension. So I leave it in the board's good discretion, how they like to handle it. Why, what is being done about these cameras that aren't working? I can answer uh, that. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the, we, we got a, a new system just for that room. So now I have in that room alone, I have eight cameras working right now. Okay. Um, so some of the cameras, I'm just trying to get to the, you know, we like the camera footage and we don't like to hear that it wasn't available. So uh, there were some cameras that weren't working and you've installed new cameras. The whole building under my, under my security plan, I'm only supposed to have 12 cameras. 12? I, I have yeah. over 28 cameras around both licenses plus now I added eight more. I mean why I, I had Mike from the police department go down there. He checked the system. He couldn't figure it out. My guy couldn't figure it out. So what I did I just bought a new system just for that room. Okay. But I did Mike from the police department go down there and check the system himself and he had no luck with it. Is some someone in charge every night that you're open to review, make sure all the cameras are working and recording before you open? Yes, we do check that. I mean, that's why we have no idea how, because if you look, I even Mike looked at the, at the at the screen and they looked like they were recording. So we have no idea. Well, yeah, well, we've had that happen before. Yeah. And nothing records. You got to stop the stop the recording and back it up and then play it and say yep it did record i mean is that a thing you can do that right uh, he, like i said i called my i don't know how to work the system i called mike from the police department he went down there he tried to play with it and he has no talk so. all right so that those cameras or the recording device whatever it is that was faulty has been replaced and you've added yeah. additional cameras. I bought a new system specific just for Saga. Okay. Um, and it's, I have eight cameras right now, just in that little room. Okay. And, and the retention period is 30 days? Yes, that's standard for the, for the DVRs. Okay. Um, Namako, what do we have as a, um, violation and penalty history on Saga? So for Saga, at the moment, I believe this will be their first violation. So we don't have any uh, violation history for Saga. No violations. Okay. No, no violation. Um, and, and also, given, given the fact that um, Saga had admitted to having violated the security plan, Without question, I, I was going to recommend that the, the um, saga be suspended for five days. However, um, that that five day suspension will be held in abeyance for a period of one year. Okay. Um, 
but they've never had a violation ever before. Well, not according to our records at the moment. Okay. Um, commissioners, uh, the licensee is admitting to of uh, the cameras not working and not providing all the video footage that they should have been able to provide and uh, suggesting a two day suspension suspended. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, so DeMarco, you're recommending that five day suspension, how many days to serve? Uh, none of them to be served, all to be held in abeyance for one year. And that's uh, for the reason why? For violation of the security plan. No, I understand that, but uh, why none to serve, no days to serve? Uh, because, like I said, um, the records show that at the present, they have not had any violations in the past. So, and given that they have also admitted to it, you know, as a gesture of good faith. Okay. All right. So, um, yes, from my perspective, I would uh, go along with that recommendation, DeMarco, and uh, Ms. President. Okay. Ms. Mike, I agree. The uh, five days suspended? Yeah. Uh, five days suspended. Held for a year, yeah. Okay. Uh, Attorney Kelly, the board. Sure, in the old days, I could step into the hallway and report back. Um, you want to go into a private chat? You can leave the Zoom and come back. Um, let you back. Go, yeah, are you, what's that? Yeah, I'm office. Oh, you're still here? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go into the hallway of the office. I'll be back in five minutes. What? He's, I'm, I'm told he's here. He, he's, he's, he's in the same office as me, apparently, without me knowing. Okay. <laughs> All right. They really are leaving to go into the hallway. <laughs> All right. The only thing about uh, Mr. Chairman about the video footage, we've oh. gone through this uh, two or three times previously. Yep. Yes, I hear you. Yes. About the malfunctioning of the video. Yeah. If you don't know how to work it, then you need an employee that does know how to work it. Is. And we also indicated that someone would check prior to uh, starting the, of the day. And Mr. At the Mr. Chairman, we, yes. we are still on the record and the licensee is at the moment not present. So I would suggest that we hold on until they come back. And then if you have anything to add. Attorney Kelly is back. Yeah. Attorney Kelly. Uh, spoken to my client, we're going to um, let the commission impose that. It's, we're not going to object. And, uh, we're not going to request a final hearing. It's, okay. I believe the sentiments are Attorney Kelly, and the commissioners could correct me if I'm wrong, is that we have um, many, many times said how important it is to check your security system and your cameras daily, every time, time you're open, to make sure they're recorded. And if they're not, then you need to notify the commission, and that wasn't done. So uh, we need to impose on you how important that is. Is Pedro Cruzado still there as the manager of record? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So the uh, attorney and the client and the uh, licensee are willing to accept the recommendation of, you know, of the board. So uh, I would make a motion to go in discussion and vote. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Commissioner Signature, yes. Okay, so the proposal uh, of the commission of five days suspended or and held in advance for one year has been accepted by the licensee. So do uh, you have anything else to say about that? Rock already is on board with that? Yes. Okay, so uh, I make a motion that the license be suspended for five days and held in abeyance for one year. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signatory? Yes. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. Check your cameras every time you open. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you and good night. Uh, commissioners, I have, uh, we have some new violations to hear and I did want to mention that we should set up, Marco, a Section 77 hearing.
Section 77 is licensees who have inactive licenses. And uh, we need to call them in and say what's going on and uh, give them an uh, opportunity to tell the board what the plan is with their license. And then we give them a certain length of time to accomplish that plan or we cancel it because pocket licenses are not allowed by the ABCC and that's what two of them will have right now. And those two licensees are the fifth alarm, which Officer Della Martyr has provided some very nice <laughs> photos to, of the uh, chain link fence around the uh, fifth alarm. The, I don't know if you saw it, but the you know, on mass slide, the there was an article that the uh, premises were purchased by a uh, agency affiliated with the Friends of the Homeless next door and. Uh, it, it, fifth alarm is closed and inactive. So we need to have a section 77 hearing on that. And just a few days ago, there was also an article on Mass Live about typical Sicilian a closing in Springfield and just doing takeout in East Long Meadows. So their license, their premises is also going to be closed. So we need to have a little chat with them about what their plans are. So if you could send out notices for those two things for uh, either the next hearing or the first one in May. That would be great. It'd take about 30 seconds each. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have new violations. Would you like me to read the new violations or do you want to do it? Um, actually, before we do that, I'm going to exit in a few minutes, but yes, um, I wanted to talk to the commission about revisiting um, the process for new licensees. Um, as things begin to open up, you know, we have this two-pronged process, of course, for them to initially come, then come back two weeks later. Um, and prior to that, they must go to planning and go through a two-step sort of um, process as well. My suggestion is as follows, is that um, in their, my suggestion is that once they come before, if it can be in tandem to planning, and not have to wait until after the two sessions before they come to us. If in fact it's determined by planning at that second session that it's a no-go, um, then we can always make it contingent upon them getting approval for, for planning. The reason why I suggest that is that it's gonna leave licensees waiting almost two months to be able to, because of our bifurcated process, for them to um, have their application move forward. And of course, in a day and age when they are struggling at best to the, you know, the restaurants and bars, it seems to me that we should make it more accessible um, for them to get started as opposed to having um, obstacles in which delay them. So that would be my suggestion is that, and again, it's of no consequence in terms of planning. I mean, it can be done in tandem. And if in fact planning does not, um, approve them, then of course it stops in its tracks. But I just think it is a more expedited way to bring it, you know, before the license commission um, in a quicker fashion. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about that. We have two licensees I can think of right now that are on that track. And you're mm -hmm. right, it'll take them two months to uh, get through even the Springfield process, never mind go off to the ABCC. So I don't see anything wrong with that. They could go to planning, then come to us, then go to planning and then finish with us and then off to Boston. Yeah, that saves them about a month if they can do that. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so I think that's how we proceed going forward is that we do planning in tandem with the license commission so it can get um, approved or disapproved um, quicker and then yeah. people know where they're at. Right. I'm in total okay. agreement. Yes. I agree. Okay, good. All right. So we'll do that. We'll plan. Uh, there's two in the pipeline that are going to planning, and then they can come to us for their first yeah. hearing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, then they'll I, go back to planning for their second thing, and then they'll come back to us for, right. and if there's meetings in the interim, or if it doesn't balance out, again, I think that we can um, approve them contingent upon them successfully getting through planning. Right. Okay. Do you have any, any feeling for how long this bifurcated hearing thing is going to go on? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I'm fully vaccinated, so I don't know what to tell you guys, but 
Um, I don't know. Um, there's been no update in terms of when City Hall is going to open up again really good, uh, right. where everybody's there. So I don't know. Um, I've been told that it could um, go to July. Um, it depends, you know, of course, on the COVID numbers and that sort of thing. But so I'm not sure. I don't have a definitive answer to that. Okay. Um, so it could last throughout the summer, I think, realistically. Um, and again, we just want to try to get people up and running um, as quickly as we can. I do have a question about, uh, we received a application from Saray Turkish to do what they did last summer under the governor's guidelines that they can serve outdoors in mm -hmm. their parking lot. Now, is that, those, that thing expired in November. Has that been re renewed for this summer? Yes, it has. So in kind of what we've been doing is those who came before or had the licenses before, the outside licenses before, are gotcha. going to be permitted just to continue to go and use their licenses. For those people who never came before us or never applied for a license, we're asking that they apply, which would be, of course, their first time because they didn't apply last year. Okay. Yeah. So it's extended. It is okay. extended. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Anybody else have any questions for Attorney Days before she departs? Nope. All right. Okay. All right. Good to see you guys. Take Thank care. You. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. We have new violations to hear. Um, one is a first one is a plaza package store armed robbery on March 13th. March, that sounds scary, doesn't it? March 13th, 2021 at 7.45 p.m., officers were dispatched to 1245 Liberty Street, the Plaza Package Store, for a report on an armed robbery. Officers arrived on scene and spoke to the calling party, an employee from the package store, who told them that a male attempted to take a bottle of Patron. The employee stated that he confronted the male, who then reached his waistband while stating, I got a gun, I will shoot you. The employee stated he was put in fear for his safety. The male exited the store and got into a vehicle which left toward Liberty Street. The employee provided a description of the male in the vehicle. It was determined the vehicle was stolen the day before this incident. SPD requests the report be submitted to the License Commission. Well, the employee did exactly what they should do. So I would uh, make a motion that we take no action on this violation. Do I have a second? You have a second. Okay, uh, all in, let's say I got a call roll. Attorney, uh, attorney, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Okay, Commissioner Signature, yes. Okay, next issue. Forest Park List Liquors Assistance on March 14th. On March 14th, 2021, at 12, 15 p.m., officers responded to 594 Sumner Avenue Forest Park Liquors for an assist. Officers spoke with the calling party, the on-duty manager of the liquor store, who told them that a male she believed to be under the age of 21 attempted to purchase alcohol with a Massachusetts license that did not belong to him. The employee added that the male looked similar to the picture on the license, but his nose and eyebrows were different. The employee asked that the male asked the male for his date of birth, which he could not provide. The male then left the store without the license. The employee stated a few minutes later, the actual owner of the license came in and tried to retrieve his license. The employee did not give the male his license, so he left prior to the officer's arrival. Um, I think that employee did exactly what they should do, and somebody's got some explaining to do to the registry of motor vehicles about why they need a new license now. Uh, I would make a motion that we take no action on this violation unless somebody has thoughts no. otherwise. Okay, a motion to take no action. Uh, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signature, yes. Uh, Nathan Bill's disturbance on March 7th. On March 7th, 2021, officers, officers were dispatched to 110 Island Pond Road, Nathan Bill's, for a report of a disturbance. The responding officers were met by two males who stated they were physically assaulted, assaulted inside the bar and then escorted out. One of the males stated that there was a verbal argument between a couple of girls and the bouncers intervened. 
The male stated that he made a comment to one of the bouncers about him yelling at the wrong girl. He added that a verbal argument then ensued and the bouncer put him in a headlock and escorted him out. He stated, the male stated uh, that he was tapping on the bouncer's arm, telling him to, telling him to stop, I guess, let go, but stated the bouncer did not let go. Officer Boudreaux's report states the officers were shown a video from a cell phone that briefly shows the altercations he noted that officers were unable to see the male put into a headlock during this video, but did observe him being escorted out by two bouncers, one holding each of the male's arms. Okay, so what do we think of this? I don't know if the two bouncers were each holding an arm. I don't know how they could have him in a headlock. Exactly. I agree. Andrew? Agree? I, yeah, I agree too, uh, as well. No action? No action, yeah. No right. action. I make, uh, I make a motion to take no action on this report. Uh, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Signatory, yes. And the, uh, <laughs> seems like weekly report now of Frank's package store trespassing. On March 23rd and March 30th, officers arrested a known male Add her in the immediate area. Stop if you've heard this story. In the immediate era of Frank, Frank's package store for trespassing. On March 23rd, officers responded to a disturbance in the parking lot of Frank's package store called in by an employee. Upon their arrival, there was no active disturbance. A female pointed out a male who had been involved in the disturbance who was now walking away through the parking lot. Officers recognized the male from several previous incidents and arrests at this same location and are aware that there is an active trespass order prohibiting him from being on this property. Officers placed the male into custody in the area of 18 Orange Street and he was again charged with trespassing. The arresting officer noted that this male is a frequent nuisance to residents and business owners and flagrantly disregards trespass orders. On March 30th, officers were again dispatched to Frank's package store for a trespass complaint called in by an employee. Officers noted the call included the male's information and they were familiar with him as, as he's been arrested numerous times from pa Frank's package store for trespassing. Upon their arrival, officers observed the male sitting on a trash barrel. He was placed under arrest and transported to 130 Pearl Street for processing. Officers again noted in their arrest report that this male has been arrested multiple times at the same location for the same offense. Um, Barry, is there is there any end to this? Is there anything these owners can do to keep this guy away, or is, there's just nothing? He just keeps coming back. No, I mean the the courts don't do anything with it. I mean, right now, especially with COVID, they're not holding anyone. So, unfortunately, he's probably already been arrested since then he's <laughs> trespassed from i think at least four or five package stores i know of does he only go to package stores or does he bother like there's an asian restaurant down there and there's i forget no, what else mostly the package stores i know the one stop he's trespassed from frank's uh benton liquors um and j and j to name a few wow, wow. he makes his way around i guess so Okay, um, commissioners. No violation. Same guy. All right. So I make a motion. We take no action. Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Commissioner Signatory. Yes. Okay. J and J package store arrest on March thirtieth. On March thirtieth, twenty twenty one, officers were dispatched to eleven twenty one State Street J and J package store for a man down. Officers arrived on scene and observed a male laying on the ground. Officers conducted a well-being check on the man who immediately woke up and started to yell at the officers. The officers asked the man if he needed medical attention, which he refused. The officer recognized this male from the night prior as he had trespassed him from the package store. Officers spoke to the male and advised him that he was loitering as well as trespassing. The officers made numerous attempts to get this male to leave on his own, but the male refused and he was placed under arrest for loitering. Officers noted in the arrest report 
There is a large sign on the J and J back store building which states no loitering, no trespassing, please take notice. So uh, this happened outside. It sounds like uh, there was nothing the license he did. No, no action. No action. Make a motion to take no action. Uh, Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Commissioner Signatory, yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if you read this entertainment district assault. It's pretty interesting. Uh, <laughs> luckily, there's no violation that we need to hear. But it's an interesting little report. Do we have anything else? Marco, any departing words of wisdom for the commission? Um, stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. I make a motion to adjourn. <clears throat> Do I hear a second? Second. second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signator, stay safe, gentlemen. Stay safe. We'll Good. see you. Take care. Good night.